Hey friends, hello. Happy Thursday. Hi, I'm Lisa Hetrick. Welcome to Craft Your Joy Live. Yeah, I had a little techie issue right before we went live, so good times. Okay friends, I have a really, really fun kind of anything goes card tutorial I'm going to share with you today. We're going to do a little bit of pattern design and watercolor tutorial using my brand new set with Gina K Designs called Mary Everything. That set just launched this week on Tuesday and I know it sold out. I know it sold out like that night, but no worries. During the live, during the live, I got a text from, um, Gina saying she was reordering them in the morning. So they've been reordered. If you're interested in that set, you know, you just go to the Gina K Design site and put your name on the wait list. And as soon as they come in, they will, um, you know, they'll let you know. And the cool thing about it is it's September. So we're, I'm going to be sharing inspiration with this set all through our holiday season. For card makers and paper crafters, I know we're always creating our projects a little earlier. And that's why the September release happened and it was an all holiday release. So super fun. I'm still going to be sharing inspiration, card tutorials, and lots of ideas all the way through the holiday season, just to give you lots of different ideas to use with this set. So, okay. I just wanted to say that, that I knew, um, I know about the set going, um, selling out but it's coming back. So, okay. I see a bunch of people popping in, tons of people popping in. Hi, Phyllis, Judith, Kathy, Susanna, Rhonda, Barbara. Hey, Dawn, Debbie. Oh, Debbie just shared that she was looking forward to this. Um, it sold out on the website, but that's okay. See, she got on the wait list. Perfect. Hi, Linda, Kathy. Bar oh boy. Hey, Nancy Sheeds. I haven't seen you in a long time. Hope all's well. Hey, Joanne. Um, Thanks. Okay. This set. Okay. I'm just going to dive right in. I think we're going to whip out two cards today. I've got two ideas. So it's either going to be a huge <laughs> success or I'm going to blow it. We'll see what happens. We're going to, we're just going to have some fun with it. And that's part of today's tutorial. Um, we're two days post release and I just want to share some inspiration. So I've got some ideas rummaging around in my head. Um, we're going to go ahead down to the down camera. I want to talk a little bit about what inspired this new stamp set um, that got created. So I know that I've shared on this channel before as an illustrator with Gina K Designs, we work almost like nine to 12 months ahead, right? So, so we work that far ahead. So this stamp set, when I created it was probably like early summer last year. Okay. And, um, I wanted to share a little bit of something. I was also at the time working on a stationary collection that was launching in, um, uh, at some local shops and it was also launching in my online shop. So that stationary collection inspired this set. And I just kind of wanted to show it to you. So here was the watercolor painting that I did that became a stationary. So this is a card. Like if I open this up, these were sold in, these were sold in stores locally and I actually sold them in my shop as part of my holiday collection. So this is a note card. So, um, this is something I do have a stationary line on my website. I'm going to be bringing back that holiday collection from last year and putting it on my website to sell this year. But this was the inspiration um, for this design. Okay. So when I painted this, I had like no idea that I would do something like this. But after I started to look at that collection, I was like, you know what? Um, I really want to create a whole complete set to, so that you could create your own cards, right? So you can make your own stationery and you could create your own holiday line of cards. So that's the inspiration for the set. We're going to get going. All of the links are down below in the description for the um, supplies that I'm going to use today. But here's the inks that I've got out today. I've got Passionate Pink. I have Cherry Red. I have um, Innocent Pink. And I'm going to play around with some greens. And it looks like, uh-oh, looks like I'm missing an obsidian. So I've got Grass Green and Fresh Asparagus. 
and I'm going to have to grab an amalgam. I've got obsidian because we're going to do a little bit of water coloring. Okay, now paper, this is the set and here is the die set that we're using. Marry everything, so let's just go ahead and dive in. Today, here is kind of the inspiration for the card, but I'm going to be doing a little bit of a mashup. The set has a triangle die, and I talked about this in the live on Tuesday, and that video is on the channel. It's the video right before this, and I talked about this die and how it worked with the, the large um, tree. So we're going to do a little bit of something with that today, and I'm also going to just do a another graphic look. Yep, got this idea. So we're going to see what happens. We'll see if I blow it. But we're going to—I'm going to talk a little bit about the stamp elements too that are in the set so to create patterns. We're always talking about patterns and watercolor on this set, so on this channel, so super fun. All right, let's dive in. Here are my two card bases. So I've got some passionate pink no yeah that's passionate pink and some cherry red this is the second card that we're gonna do but this is the first one and this is the um some gina k heavyweight card no lightweight cardstock just layering cardstock that i'm going to do the background in this is a piece of watercolor paper i use the strathmore um, ready cut watercolor that i usually use we're going to do some emboss resist watercoloring so I already pre-stamped this big honking tree on my watercolor paper and used clear embossing powder. And the reason why I didn't do this live is because of the sound of the um, the sound of the the heat tool. It's loud and it's obnoxious, and I kind of wanted to move things along. So we're going to go ahead and add in some color. I'm going to do a little bit of a mixture here. I also brought in, I think we're going to use our inks today versus um, some watercolor. So you could do both with this emboss resist. So what I did is I took that Strathmore Ready Cut watercolor, cut the die, the triangular die out, and then I stamped the, the leafery tray right onto that watercolor cardstock and I embossed it in clear emboss powder. Now I'm embossing challenged, but you can see, you can see that clear powder. So my embossing tends to be, look a little bit wonky. So we're going to see what happens. I'm not, I think I'm just going to use this. We're going to start off with, I was just making a little inline decision there. We're going to use this passionate pink ink. Now on this channel, we've I do a lot of watercolor and I do a lot of watercolor with different different kinds of things. Inks and inks and um, watercolor paints. So my brush is wet, my ink is wet. I'm just gonna just kind of hit that with a little bit of water and I'm just gonna drop in that passionate pink. So we're just doing a little bit of a wet into wet and that color is resisting because I did that emboss resist. Now this technique is not new to this channel. Many of you have seen it. It's a little messy today though. Let's go ahead and move that down. I'm gonna I want to get a little bit of red in there with a little bit of a cherry red. So I just have a number 10 round brush. That's totally irrelevant to what we're doing. Look at that. That's going to stain. That's going to leave a mark. All right, I'm going to drop a little bit of this red into the into the wet areas too. So I've got passionate pink going and I have the cherry red. These two colors are super juicy. I love them in the Gina line. I'm just going to drop them in and we're going to let this be. And see what happens. I could need a little more red right there. Now remember along the way, if you have questions along the way, just pop them in the chat with a little cue so that I see everybody, see everybody's uh, question. We're going to let this sit to the side and dry while we move on to our pattern background. I did the messy stuff first, right? Oh, isn't that pretty? 
did all the messy stuff for us. I love that cherry red. I could have actually just got the ring anchors out, but you know what? I got the pads. We're going to use the pads. And we're just kind of winging it. Look at that. All right. Now, oh, we're going to get to some pattern making. I want to talk a little bit. I'm going to bring a couple things in before we get to the actual pattern for the card, for the back of the card. There's a couple stamps in the set that I intentionally designed for, for patterns, for making patterns. We've got this stamp and this stamp right here, and these two work together. Then we have this star stamp right here where this piece will work with this piece as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can do the patterns. And let's go ahead and do them in two different colors so that you can see. So I've got that innocent pink and the passionate pink. So when I'm doing these patterns, I want to work light to dark. So here's my light color. I'm just going to nest these together. This isn't my card backing. I'm just kind of showing you how um, I can nest those stamps together, nest that stamp together to create that pattern. And we're going to take this piece, which is the diamond piece, and let's see if I hit it because I'm looking at it backwards here. And you can go like right inside. You can turn it. We can also turn it this way. Let's see how successful I will be with that. You can also turn it this way and drop it right in there. Which is, very, which is exactly like this stamp right here, okay, to create your stars. But that's the really fun thing. I like to create these little builder elements that go in your, that go in your sets so that you can create these pattern backgrounds. Now, I'm going rogue and like winging it and doing it without like using a misty. So if you want more precision, so here is a Misty. Yes, I know my Misty is filthy dirty. It's got all kinds of stuff all over it. But if you want more precision with lining up your patterns, you could easily use your stamp tool, the Misty. All right. Now, let's go ahead and keep those colors. And that's for my pattern. I also wanted to show you this star in the set. Now, last month, last month's stamp set, actually every stamp set that I release with Gina has a lot of different builder elements to it. But these couple that are coming up, and this holiday one, has a lot of different builder pieces for patterns, which makes it super fun. Okay, and we're going to take this piece and see how you can just drop it on top of your stamped image. And if you were using the Misty, you would have this all lined up, but I'm not. <laughs> not lining it up. Just going to go rogue. And see how you can add that second color right there. Let's just kind of come in a little tighter here and see what we got. So you can add that second color, which is kind of fun. And also, these stamps work well by themselves, which I think is fun. They work together, and then they work by themselves. So I just kind of went a little nerdy out, nerding out a little bit about some of the patterns. So let's go ahead and create, let's take a peek at our watercolor piece. That's still drying. Kind of digging that. That's going to be super cute on there. It's got this pink. I love using pinks for the holiday cards. Kind of gives it that retro looking feel to it. Gives it a little bit of a kind of... Yeah, like a 50s kind of design look and feel to it. Ah, Dawn just shared that star is beautiful. Hello, Monica. Good afternoon. Okay, we're going to create. Here's our back. Here's our pattern. Here's our background for Passionate Pink. And we're going to create, since there's so much color. All right, so a little bit of nerdy design chatter coming. Since there's passionate pink and there is the cherry red in here and there's so much color. It's super vibrant in this resist. 
I want this pattern background to be a little less in your face. So I'm going to start with my lighter color. Let's take this and move this over here. I'm going to start with Innocent Pink. And I'm going to like concentrate a pattern that's going down in this direction because our, our um, tree is going to be over top. So I really want to focus on a pattern that's kind of going it's more like this in this direction because we know we're going to have some open spaces here and an open space here. So I'm going to go ahead in and kind of start at this very top and just use this as my anchor point to build my pattern going down and around. <laughs> Kathy said I love the design chatter. You know what Kathy, I can't help it. I am a, I am a graphic designer and so all that nerdy stuff comes out because that's how my brain works. And that's how yeah, that's how my visual brain works. So I think everybody has been really enjoying it and they find it useful. And I think it's very useful for your card making projects. Especially when you're trying see I'm trying to get that pattern to kind of go down there and I'm nesting these pieces together. With your card making projects, sometimes we come to this hobby and we don't have any ideas or ideas that we like. So I feel like some of these little design principles can be helpful. All right, I'm just adding a few more in. I've got that, got that swoosh going that I want, but now I'm just going to add a few more pieces in. That was a little close, but that's okay. And I want to get kind of an idea of, I feel like I can add a little more here. And maybe one little rogue baby down there. So let's go ahead and add one right here and it goes off the page. Now, when you're doing your stamped images and you're going off of your edges, it creates that visual interest too, which, you know, if you're trying to go for like perfect symmetry, get everything on the card front, you can absolutely do that. But if you want a little bit more of a visual interest and see how we've got that going here, I encourage you to stamp off the edge a little bit. It also just kind of um, makes the pattern look kind of interesting. Okay, let's take a peek. That was a nerdy design chatter. I think, I think I'm kind of really digging the way that looks. And I'm going to wait because I'm going to resist the urge to do something about it. Now, I'm going to add the second layer in, and I think we're going to go in. Let's cover this up because i got a feeling my hand's going to go in it. Anyway, we're going to go in. I think I'm going to go in with a little bit of passionate pink. I thought about doing the red and pulling that out, but I want to pull. The red is my contrast color happening over here in those little bloops, but I want... I want it to be a little bit more subtle in my background. So let's go in and see. So in my brain, this seems like a good idea. We'll see what happens. Like I can visualize it. I can close my eyes and see what's happening. Now I'm going to add that two-step stamping in, but I'm only going to add it in three places to start. Here, here, and here. And see how I like it. Instead of doing every single one. Because what I want to do with my background, and here comes some background design chatter, is I want to create that contrast between silhouette images, which is our solids, and our line art images to create a little bit of a different visual interest in that background. Holy smokes. Okay, let's take a peek at how I feel about that laying there. So I've got that, and it makes me want to, hmm, kind of like that. I think I like that. But you know what I want to try? So we've got our solid, we've got our two-step stamping, and then we have our line art. Now, I think I want to add, this could go, nope. Nope, my brain just said don't do that. So I think we're going to leave it be for, for the moment. We're going to leave it be because I also want to put my 
I will also have a sentiment I want to put on here. So let's go ahead and cover that up. So did everybody pop in the chat? Did you catch the live release on Tuesday night? Holy smokes. It was a huge release. I've got some Gina K connect glue here. Um, some liquid glue. I'm just going to put this card front down. This pattern is, is kind of subtle which I'm digging that because there is a lot of activity going on in the leafery in the leafery piece. There's so much going on here. This is like a really big standalone kind of stand. There's a lot of graphic stuff happening. I'm going to just kind of tap off some of the wetness here. Uh, hi, Kathy. Ah, Geraldine just said, I love the use of the pink for the holidays too. Oh, thank you. Okay. This essentially is going to go here. I'm going to pop it up a little bit. But right now I'm going to lay it down. Because my eye, I want to take a look at this from a design perspective. I like the way this is kind of nesting around our triangle. We're repeating that shape with the triangle here. And then I have a little bit of peeping here and this line art piece here. But something is telling me, like, put something up there, Lisa. Put something up there. And part of my brain is resisting the urge to do it, but the other part is like, let's do it. So we're going to put a line art version of that star up there. So I definitely have kept that swoosh kind of look, but I want... I feel like something should go right here. So it's kind of lined up with these two pieces right here. And see how easy that was to like line up? Pretty easy. Yep, Joanne just said just the line art. Kathy's a great release. <coughs> Excuse me, impatiently waiting for your stamp set and die set. Me, I'm so happy. It was a great release from everyone. Okay, I think that made a huge difference in um, kind of balancing out what I got going here. Now, I want to use, before we like wrap this card and kind of move on to the next, I intentionally created these sentiments so that they could go at the bottom of the tree and kind of act as the tree stump. So, Noel, not so much. Hope you could do Merry and bright, definitely, but I'm going to pop the joy. Rhonda said, I watched the release. That's great. Got your order in. It was also the first time, uh, first release with the brand new um, website. And Gina has worked so hard on that website for so long. I was just so happy that it worked out the way she wanted You know what, there's something about those reds I don't like, and I might be fixing them. Okay, I'm going to pop this little joy. I'm just going to eyeball this here. Pop this joy right here. I used a little bit of obsidian amalgam ink. Just pop that right there. That's going to be our stem, I mean our tree trunk. So, the, the cherry red that I popped in kind of separated a little bit. So it granulated. And um, I think I want to, I think I'm just going to take a little bit of this pink and just kind of drop it in and just add a little bit. Just go over that granulation a little bit. I could have went in with the passionate pink and did that. So I love that red, but I don't love that I separated. I added too much water to it. So if you're using cherry red and you want to make it a watercolor medium, don't add so much water to it because it, it does granulate. Now, the thing about using inks and Gina K inks as watercolor mediums, they are beautiful. The colors are super vibrant, super duper vibrant. But that cherry red is sort of like a granulating paint. And if you water it down too much, you get a little bit too much granulation, which means the the dye is separating from like the smoothing agent that's in it so 
Judith said, Judith just shared. She watched the release. That was a fun release. Okay, I'm going to pop this right on here in this card. I'm going to let that dry. Hmm. I'm looking in my general zone here for some, some pop dots that I thought that I grabbed here, but I did not. So, here they are. I got a little bit of foam tape. I'm just going to pop up the back there. Let's go ahead and flip this over. It's a little bit wet, so who knows what's going to happen. Pop a little foam. And this card came together pretty quickly. Which is good because I want to play with the second card. So the second idea, I normally don't do two cards. And we normally do some more involved um, watercolor. But today, because it was release week, I'm just going to ease in and do these two cards and see if my second idea works out. So, there we go. I'm going to pop that down. I'm going to let this dry and we're going to come back to it. So, we've got our tree. We've got the pattern. I'm going to add a little, we'll add a little bit of sequins, but we'll do that at the end. And popping that little joy in there just kind of finishes off that tree, gives that bottom, that look of the trunk, and I just love this background. Clean, simple, but we look like we got a lot of watercolor and mixed media going on with that emboss resist. So pop in the chat if you've ever, if you've done emboss resist. I know I've shared this watercolor emboss resist on this channel a couple times, many times. Um, because with stamps like this that have a lot going on, but have a predominant amount of solid in them, this technique works incredibly well. Joanne just said granulating and the grains of the pigment leaves grain. Yes. Yes. That's what granulating means. What happens is when the water, and it happens with watercolor too. When the water, um, the you have too much water and you have a granulating ink um, or paint, it just will separate. Everything will separate and it leaves the granules behind, which creates some really nice texture and dimension. And I love it. Okay, let's let's pop this to the side because I'm going to work out this second idea that I have in my head. And we're going to do we're going to do a pattern background. But before we do that, we're going to do the tree. Okay? Geraldine said she loves cher cherry red a lot too. Geraldine, I love cherry red as well. One thing I want to mention about the cherry red, and I'm going to bring it in, you can see it. Cherry red is my favorite red in the Gina K, Gina K line. There's also tomato soup, which is another red that skews a little bit more, has a little more yellow in it, so it skews a little bit more on the orange side. But the cherry red will stain your stamp if you don't clean your stamp like super quick, which I don't. So um, I don't mind it because I feel like when my stamps get stained, they are well loved and they're being used. So super fun. Okay. Um, all right. Let's dive back in to this next shape that we've got going here. Now, in the card idea sheet, I have the card idea sheet. Let's, let's just pop this over here. Every release with Gina K, I create a card idea sheet. This card idea sheet is available. The link is down below in the description, I think. You can get it on my website at indigojadeart.com. Go to free downloads. You can get every card idea sheet of for every single stamp set that I've ever created. Now, one of the things I mentioned on the live and the last tutorial um, on Tuesday was how I intentionally designed those sentiments to fit inside of the shape so that we could have a graphic look to your tree. So we're going to do that. We're going to do, we're going to play with a little bit of watercolor and a little bit of black amalgam ink, and we're going to play, we're going to see what happens. So I, um, I could be really wrong and I could blow it, but here's another example, joy, hope, Noel and peace, how it fits like right in that shape and has that graduated look to it. It's Perfect. So let's go ahead and get these out. Joy Noel 
um, Hope and Peace. And the other thing I wanted to mention in this stamp set is that I didn't do like Merry Christmas. I did Merry and Bright and I did Merry Everything. You could use that Merry Everything all year round. You can actually use a lot of these elements all year round just simply by changing the colors. So we're going to use the leafery elements that are in this set. Let me grab them. I'm going to show you how they nest together. So let's just grab all that out. We're going to see what happens. So here's my idea. We're going to do, let's see what happens. I'm laughing because sometimes my ideas feel like they're, let me know in the, in the chat if this is you. Sometimes I have these ideas. I'm a very visual person. I can close my eyes and I can see something before I make it. And I can see something like before it happens. But sometimes um, the idea is so crystal clear, but the execution doesn't come off very well. So we're going to see how this works. I'm going to do joy kind of up here. And I'm using amalgam because this is a piece of watercolor paper. And I'm eventually going to do a little watercoloring on it. And that amalgam isn't going to move. That amalgam ink is um, works with your water-based um, water projects. All right, so I've got joy. And then I've got hope. Let's see, I'm just going to do my anchoring. I know my joy, I want my joy up there. I know my peace, I want that to be down here. And I'm kind of placing these in joy, hope, Noel, peace, and kind of doing uh, like the way tinsel would be or the way your lights would be going down the tree. See everybody chatting it up there in the, in the uh, chat. <laughs> so funny. Okay. I'm going to drop the piece down here. And just kind of nested it towards that bottom and then towards that edge. Kind of gave me the perfect way to line up. Hi, Sandy. Sandy just popped in. I see people that were able that got the set. I cannot wait to see what you all create with it. Um, again, because we work so far ahead, and because I had this vision for this idea for this set, like last summer that I'm just kind of excited about it. I'm excited that it's here and I'm excited that we're all getting a chance to finally play with it. Okay, hope. We're gonna pop hope in. I think I'm gonna put hope like right here. And then let's take that off and pop Noel in. All right. And don't forget, if you have questions along the way, just pop them in the chat. Today's tutorial, I'm fitting two cards in because I had the watercolor idea and the pattern idea, and then I just had this other watercolor idea. That's a little bit crooked, but I don't care. I think it looks good. All right, I've got my Joy, Hope, Noel, and Peace, and my dominant amount of space is up here at the top because... We're going to take that big piece of honkin' leafery, and I think that's going to go right here. Or do I want to do this piece first? Let's see. Yep, we're going to play around with this leafery and just kind of line it up. Now, I've got two greens here. This is grass, nope, this is fresh asparagus, and this is grass green. And we're going to play with these two greens. Fresh asparagus is a little bit darker. Grass green has a little more yellow in it. So let's just go ahead. Pop this right in right here. Okay. Now, we're going to do this along the way. I'm just taking my brush, getting it wet, and then I'm taking the tip of the brush and I'm just activating that fresh asparagus and giving it a little bit of a washy watercolor look to it. Just kind of moving that color a little bit. 
super simple let it dry don't ever do it if I kind of went in hard and fast and wet I could make this move a little bit more and I actually might just make it move out so my brush is wet the papers dry and you can see how I'm just kind of dragging out some of that color just to get a little bit of a washy look to it oh my gosh I'm loving it okay so the idea is starting to come to life and it's basically working the way I thought it would in my head. So, haha, -ha, we've got a good day going here. Now, I'm going to take some more of my leaf free pieces. I've got this big honking leaf free. That piece is going to go right there. I already used this piece. Now, I want to go this way. That was an open line. I'm going to take a solid now. Hey, Cherie! And I'm going to come in fresh asparagus grass green. I'm going to take my solid, and you see that little tiny bit of that line? I'm going to line up this piece of leafery with that line right there. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I am genuinely like super excited because I woke up with this idea. I wasn't going to do it. I was going to do the other one. Now we're just activating the the um, grass green by adding a little bit of water to it because Gina K inks will activate with water and they make the most beautiful watercolor medium for your card projects. Okay, see how I'm just still going back up here and adding, getting that to activate a little bit. Now, if I go over my um, my words, it's not a big deal because they're in amalgam. They're going to be just beautiful. Thank you, Gloria. She said, oh, Lisa, you're just so creative. So, yeah, I woke up with this idea, and then I was like, mm, let's see if I can execute it. Because, again, sometimes my ideas in my head are bigger than my execution. You'll have to ask my husband. He's always like, first of all, if I ever come to him with, um, and maybe some of you can relate. If I ever come to him with a big idea, which is, I'll be like, hey, I've got this idea. And immediately, sometimes, I see the color rush from his face. Because <laughs> he knows that the idea might be a little bit bigger than what can actually be executed uh, in real life. Okay, so see how I lined this up? I lined that piece of leafery up with the H. I'm just going to go ahead and turn my piece here and then just activate. I love that fresh asparagus. I just love it. You can see when that fresh asparagus dries, you see that little bit of the yellow that's coming out from the dye ink. Now, this technique we've done a couple different times on this channel, but it is one of the easiest ways to get watercolor effects in your paper crafting projects without losing your mind, right? Without freaking out about watercolor, without having a ton of supplies. My brush is wet, the paper's dry. I'm just going to work with what's here. Just kind of draw that out a little bit. So this is a wet into dry technique. I'm just going to blend out these harsh lines a little bit and let that kind of go. Oh my goodness, I am loving the way this looks. And see how I'm just going right over that hope with just a little bit of a wet brush. And it's not bleeding. Love it. Okay, so I've got that piece of leafery. Now I'm going to come down and go this way with another piece of leafery. So yeah, big ideas. <laughs> Dawn just said, every time I say to my husband I have an idea, he gets scared. <laughs> Mine too. Mine too. He gets a little scared. He's very patient with me though and he listens to what I'm gonna say. And then sometimes he poo-poos my idea, but then I, you know, I'm pretty persistent. I always come back with a either a new version or a scaled back version of that idea. Okay, this piece of leafery is a little bit smaller. I'm going to kind of have it nest off of that E and just come around that 
no in the Noel and just kind of pop that right there. So see how that piece of leafery went right between the N and the O, but it's kind of anchored off of that E. A little bit of nerdy design chatter there. Now I'm just taking a little bit of my wet brush and activating that uh, grass green color and just pulling that out. <laughs> Dawn said plan B. Oh, there's always a plan B for my big ideas. So, but sometimes like with paintings and paper crafting, I do have like lots of big ideas or visuals that I can see in my head that might not always translate well. So, but today I thought, hey, let's go for it. We're going to do this live and see what everybody, you'll just see me do it live. And if it, if it works, it works. And so far I'm kind of digging the way this looks. Now I've got something going on. I'm intentionally leaving this alone up top because we're going to put that star up there. And I've got a graduation of the greens. It's very dark up here and it's getting lighter as we go down. This little bit right here. I'm going to, I can try to like bleed it out just a little bit more, but I don't want to overwork it. So I'm just going to leave it be. Okay. Let's just go ahead and cover these inks up so I don't get my hands in them. Now I'm loving the way this came out. I'm going to set this to the side and then we're going to work on the pattern for the background here. <laughs> Nancy just shared, my head is often a better artist than my hand. Execution is usually my issue. You know what, Nancy? I think that's part of just like the process, the creative process. There are, you know, we get on these lives or we do tutorials and, um, you know, part of today was challenging myself to like just wing it and go for it and see if it works out. But I totally, totally understand what you're saying totally understand what you're saying. So my background here, my back card background is going to be cherry red. And I've got all these traditional greens going in here. So I think what we're going to do for the background is we're going to create that pattern background. But you know what? I am only going to do the pattern background with the solid star. And here's why. I'm going to use the cherry red. We've got some of the solids going here, and I think that's going to give me the look that I want. Instead of what we did here, which was our light and dark, and we've got like some contrast going on, I'm going to hit this with just the star version of my pattern. It's also going to, the fact that I'm using cherry red and I've got this cherry red base is also going to help... Um, <laughs> is also going to help uh, create some consistency in that color. Nancy said, if I winged it on a live, we'd be live for hours. Well, I was kind of, that could have very well happened today, but I was just kind of hoping I could wing it and we could make it happen. So we've got this stamp that goes this way. I'm going to turn it this way and do my stamps more like a diamond. It's a diamond shape, but I'm going to focus on creating it in a diamond. I'm going to come down like we did in the other pattern and go in this direction and see how I like it. I'm just kind of off. I don't know if I'm going to like this offset, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm liking it. Okay, we're going to come over this way and just keep building my pattern. Now, I build patterns rogue. You can see that they're not perfect, but we've got this pattern going. I'm using a regular stamp block. If you're just getting started with making your patterns with these elements, try a stamp platform. Try Misty. See if you like it. I'm going to pop this so this goes off. So we got a little something going off the edge. And then... I got this feeling, I'm leaving that top area open. I got this feeling as I lay this on top of here that that one was kind of pointless. I feel like I need something peeping out over here. So I'm going to go do a little bit of rogue, kind of following that line, just eyeballing it. 
sort of like how I hang pictures, just eyeball it. And then see how I feel about this when I put this on. Okay, kind of like that. Kind of like that energy. It's subtle. I'm going to end up bringing this down a little bit. So a little bit more of that's going to show. Mm. Yep. I think I want something going off the edge over here. So let's do this. Just pop that right there. See what we got. All right, I'm liking this pattern. Let's leave, let's just go ahead and adhere it to the background and see what we got. I'm just finally looking up to see everybody that's here. Do, 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 do. Okay. So yeah, so my idea is sort of working out in my head. Okay. Just got a little Gina K Connect glue. We're going to pop that down. Now, we're going to talk about this star stamp. And I already, already made one and I pre cut it, but this is the stamp. And you have opportunity with this stamp to do some two-step stamping. So let's go ahead. We did that here. And I'm going to, we did that at the beginning. Now what I did was made that star in the pink and the red. So I made that star in the innocent pink and then I did a little bit of the cherry red inside of the element there. So we're just going to pop that on here. I like this is this is getting that like traditional Christmas color vibe. So I'm kind of digging it. But let's take a look at our star. Now, I got a question in my last video about can the star fit on the card with this big honking tree? And I responded, yeah, it totally can. It can fit on the card with the big honking tree once you nest the tree a little closer to the bottom. So we're going to line up that tree at the very bottom of this so that we can pop that up there. All right, let's go ahead, get a little bit of foam tape, pop that down here. And while I'm putting this foam tape on, I did last week, for those of you who joined me, and several of you did join me, we did a paint along on the channel um, and I painted a sunflower. So if you missed that, go back to that video um, and you can, you know, paint along with me. And there was also a free download for the sunflower so that you can uh, trace it onto your own watercolor paper or print it out on your own watercolor paper. And I am going to be doing some more of those paint alongs alongside of the card tutorials. Uh, Geraldine says, <laughs> feeling your excitement. I happen to love words and how you're using them here. Oh, <laughs> she said, like I said, Lisa, I love how your brain works. Yeah, me too. Except sometimes I overwork it. But don't we all? We all. I mean, as humans, we have like a thousand tabs open in our brain in a day and you're working on something and you're thinking about all the different kinds of ideas that you have for all different things. So, ah, uh, Sandy just said she's liking the color combination. Okay. I'm going to just pop this right here and just kind of pop that on top. So here's what I'm liking about the star and using not using the full two-step stamping for our pattern background here. We've got some contrast happening. We've got this cherry red that's in the solids and it's immediately like pulling my eye to the star and the cherry red pieces that are going in that diamond direction. So we've got that really nice pattern happening behind the traditional tree with all of the greens. 
If I wanted to, this to pop a little bit more, I probably would have taken a little bit of the green watercolor and ran, went around the edges a little bit. But I'm going to leave it because I like I like the subtlety of this color and that shape. We've got that illusion happening of our triangular tree shape without having this stamp define those edges for us. Now, coming back to this, I see right here, I, I really don't love that white dead space there. Um, so I'm going to see if I can get this ink to activate a little bit. Now, we've got a question. Joanne just said, I wondered if you can put watercolor paper in an inkjet printer. Yes, you can. Um, so here's what happens when you do that. So I am getting this ink to activate. So see how I'm just pulling it up and around that joy a little bit just to get a little tinge of that green happening up there. So Joanne, when you pop your watercolor paper into your inkjet printer, when you go to just make sure that your image is a lot lighter, like not a solid black, like knock it back to like 10%. So when that prints out, you can see the image on your paper, but you, when you're um, brush when your wet brush hits that black it is going to bleed a little bit and that's okay be if the color if the black is printing out a lot later okay so I hope that helps all right I'm kind of digging this card so here are our two cards let's put some let's put some things on them let's put some sequins I'm going to go with the subtle this disco is this disco ball it's not disco ball it's a different it's a Gina K it's linked down in my description it's the one I kind of use all the time I've got this picker today because I have misplaced my picker my Gina K picker it is in the special place of where I put it now I'm gonna use my I think I'm gonna use I might yeah I'm not gonna use this negative space I'm just going to kind of go with the way I normally do. Just pop one here, pop one here. One, two, three. Let's see how that looks. I'll pop one right here. Let's see. I'm probably going to have to do this with my finger um, because I didn't bring the right picky tool. So let's go ahead and pop that in. My Gina K pick tool, which I absolutely love, is somewhere in my office here in the special place, which means I probably have it sitting underneath something from the last project that I did, and it didn't get put back in its little container, but I'll find it. No worries. So I've got a few little jemmies here that just kind of add up, add a little bit of bling to it, very subtle bling um, versus adding color. Okay. Oh, you know, there's one more thing I'm going to add to this card. just had an idea because I feel like it needs something. And then with this one, I'm going to go in and pop a little glue right in the center of those three spots. Let's pop one here. Pop one here. Get a little something going there. <laughs> Joanne just said, oh my goodness, that special place. I think everybody has that special place. It's the place where we put things and we've forgotten where we put them. Um, my kids laugh because I used to walk around the house when I did stuff like that. Or walk around the office when I put things somewhere because I put them away. And I put them where I would intentionally think that I would remember where they were next time. And I, I couldn't. So I would say, I would walk around and I would scream the words, reveal yourself. Telling the thing to reveal itself. Yeah, it worked sometimes. And sometimes not. Reveal yourself. So if the, especially my son, he'd be like, mom, I heard you say reveal yourself. Did you find it? And I'd be like, no, because you know that doesn't work, right? I'm like, yeah, it does. It works. <laughs> Dawn just says my place is usually the floor. Okay, I went in and grabbed the the um, berries. 
and I'm feeling like I want to add a few berries. Now it's going to be, I'm kind of going rogue. I've already put this on, put this card base on. So my stamping may not be perfect because it's a little wonky to stamp it on there, but that's okay. I want to add these cute little berries because I think it's going to draw a little bit of red to the card. And I think it's going to be cute. Let's see. Let's pop one right here where the H is. Oh, I love that. Okay, I feel like we've got to get... Do, 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 do. Let's pop one right down here. Oh my gosh, I love that. Okay, I'm going to resist the urge to add another berry because my brain is trying to tell me to put one right there. So I might just do it. Let's see. And I might just do it off the edge a little bit and see if I boogered it up. Nope, didn't booger it up. But did go off the edge a little bit, and I'm kind of digging the way that looks. Kind of really digging the way that looks. Okay, we did it in an hour. I got two cards here. I don't necessarily love what I did here on this one. I'm going to see if I can move some of that color off. Getting it wet here so that I can kind of bring back some of that embossed white which is cool I like it but now I'm liking it a little bit better so there we go we get two super fun cards with some pattern backgrounds and we're just kind of easing into the holiday season I'll be honest I don't make a lot of um, holiday cards to give away like I don't mass produce I will give out a few but these are some really great whimsical ideas for our holiday card making. What do you think? What do you think? Yeah, I got two. I've never done two cards in one tutorial, so super fun. Okay, I hope you got a lot out of today's tutorial. I know we're just easing in. The release just happened on Tuesday. I didn't want to go all ham and do a huge watercolor tutorial this week with this set. Next week, I'm going to come back there's probably going to be two videos next week, a paint along and um, a card making tutorial. But next week I'm going to mash this set up with um, some other sets that just came out and do a little bit more of an intense watercolor tutorial. So again, we'll be focusing a little bit more on the watercolor technique versus the dynamics of the uh, card design like we did today. So Looks like everybody is saying, love it, going back to the beginning. I can't wait to see what everybody creates with the stamp set when it arrives. If you post your projects in your social media feeds, tag me so I can come in and take a peek. If you're not in social media, you can always email me. If you want to share your card with me, email it to me. My email address is down below in the description, or if you head over to my website, you can hit the contact page and you can email me from there. Super easy. Okay, friends, I hope you have a really fantastic Thursday. I'm sending you into the weekend to craft your joy. I hope these ideas um, really kind of inspired you today to just kind of get out all of your supplies and just have some fun. And you know what? Whatever you're thinking, whatever's in your brain that you're thinking of an idea, go with it, right? We did that today live, um, me not knowing that it was going to be turnout, and it kind of turned out turned out even better than I thought. So, all right, friends, I'll be back next week. If you're on my email list, you know, you'll get that notification sent to you straight away um, of when I'm going to be going live. It's probably going to be Thursday. This time seems to work um, as we head into the fall season. So um, I hope to see you there. And I would encourage you to get on my email list. Also, if you're at all interested in my free community, I'm never 100% sure if everybody sees my posts and social media, even though I do post a lot. Um, I do have a free community at craftyourjoy.com where I post a lot of other tutorials, a lot of other free content. So I would encourage you to sign up. It's free to you. Okay, friends, I see everybody saying thank you and goodbye. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm so grateful that you all took the time. 
today over lunch sort of to um, be with me and enjoy the card tutorial. So I hope to see you soon. Have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. Thanks friends. Bye now.